Morning viewers, welcome back to the channel. The war in Ukraine continues to impact the fertilizer markets with 34.5% nitram hitting £920 per tonne and 46% urea hitting £925 a tonne. We have discussed adjusting break-even calculations before using the industry guide RB209 and more recently the ADAS and AHDB table. With November 2020 wheat futures at £250 per tonne and urea currently at £925 per tonne, the AHDB nitrogen fertilizer adjustment calculator suggests reducing feed wheat nitrogen by 35 kilos per hectare. As detailed by Sarah Clark from ADAS, however, to achieve the 13.5% protein of milling wheats still needs 220 kilos of nitrogen, which can be justified by a £30 per tonne milling premium. Estimating a soil nitrogen supply, SNS, is an important step in end decision making for arable crops. Obviously, we don't want to use any more nitrogen fertilisers than necessary because of the cost and the possibility of leaching into groundwater supplies. We can hold nitrogen in our soil by planting cover crops, which captures the nitrogen, for example, oats, or we can, use, or we can plant legumes, which fix atmospheric nitrogen. But let's be realistic, an annual crop of fibre beans will only fix 80 kilos of nitrogen per hectare against a winter wheat crop requirement of 200 kilos per hectare. So, some additional supply will be required, or will it? The AHDB states that soil nitrogen supply predictions prove worthwhile whether a field assessment method like RB209 or a soil mineral nitrogen measurement is used. In an AHDB study, soil mineral nitrogen explained more of the variation in harvest soil nitrogen supply than using the industry guide RB209. Soil mineral nitrogen based predictions perform best on clay and silt soils in low rainfall areas and where soil nitrogen supply is expected to be high. Overall there appear to be two ways in which mineral nitrogen measurement can help to deliver improvements to end management on the farm. Firstly, to confirm and manage fields where soil nitrogen supply is suspected of being very high or even uncertain and two, as part of a package of measures, including field assessment and monitoring of crop growth, for example GAI, where the management or farming system has changed. Like our conversion to winter cover crops and spring direct drilling. Spring rather than autumn mineral soil mineral nitrogen measurement helps explain the variations in soil nitrogen supply. Sampling at 90 centimetres is best. Soil mineral nitrogen predictions using soil organic matter, the total soil N, or additional available nitrogen improve the precision of spring soil nitrogen supply predictions. So here, where we have experienced a low rainfall winter over heavy clays, where we have also been practicing, practicing nitrogen retention practices like cover crops and direct drilling, it provides us with a better estimate of soil nitrogen supply. Here are the results for the soil mineral nitrogen and additional available nitrogen for the soil sent to Hillcourt Farm Research. There are some interesting results here. The soil mineral nitrogen, for example, is very high on cottages field. This field has a lot has been in long-term grass, was direct drilled with beans, and has never been cultivated since. While soil mineral nitrogen is low on Chalkshire, a block of long-term arable. 
It is possible that the previous crop in Chorkshire, which was winter wheat, scavenged all the nitrogen, while the oilseed draping cottages didn't. However, we only applied foliar nitrogen to both crops last year. The additional available nitrogen amounts are interesting too, with good amounts of 80 to 100 kilos per hectare in most fields, likely to become available as the soils warm up apart from Boswell's where the figure is 50 kilos per hectare, possibly because there is a lesser history of direct drilling and being thin soils over chalk they don't benefit from the nutritional holding abilities of clay soils. In any case we use 100% of these figures to deduct from the theoretical amount of 5 GAI green area index for wheat crops at 40 kilos per GAI a total of 200 kilos of nitrogen per hectare then the difference is topped up using N at 60% efficiency so for example a field B and C becomes 200 less than 160 which equals 34 Fertilizer N used at 60% efficiency gives 34 times 60% which equals 56.6 kilos of N per hectare. Protein for milling could then be required at a further 40 kilos per hectare giving a total requirement of 96. Still a massive saving compared to RB209 at 180 plus 40, 220 kilos of N. It looks like cottages with an SNS of 282 will need no nitrogen at all for milling spring wheat. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to the channel and click on the little bell if you want to be notified of when our next video goes live. See you next time, bye!